He'll be here in one minute. My daddy will be here in one minute to make this cooking video. <laughs> or any video. Stay tuned. Bye. Thank you, Sammy. Hey guys, it's Paul here from ImpulsiveCulinarian.com and in this video, we'll be talking to you about my dairy-free, gluten-free cornbread recipe. Skillet cornbread, the right way! So I've been doing my research, guys, and I've learned a lot about cornbread in the past couple of weeks before making this video. There's a great big debate that goes on about cornbread that I did not know about until making this video. Um, it turns out that there's purists who are very much of the mind that cornbread should not be sweet. Ah, surprise to me anyway. Um, so I learned something new. Cornbreads that I've had in the past have always been quite sweet. Uh, but I learned that uh, down in the south, you don't make it sweet. And so here's what I've done is I decided to do a little bit of a fusion. I last night did a test kitchen uh, try, okay, of uh, some very, very uh, low sugar cornbread. I gotta admit, I'm just being honest, I didn't enjoy it very much. The consistency was awesome, the texture was amazing, but the taste, it wasn't there for me. Okay, so we're not going all the way in the other direction. We're not making a sweet cornbread, but we're gonna base it on the traditional, and we're gonna use a little bit of fusion to get it to be sort of like my modern version of a dairy-free, gluten-free cornbread. So, let's talk about corn. Um, this is going to be the optional ingredient that you'll see in the list coming up shortly. I really think that in order to add some extra texture and give it some authenticity, okay, I'm going to put uh, some corn kernels in this recipe, but uh, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, one thing that makes this authentic, okay, cast iron skillet. That's the way to go. After my test trial, I got to tell you, man, I've never had such a great uh, texture and quality of cornbread as I did when I made it in a cast iron skillet. That is the best. Forget the casseroles. Don't even bother. Cast iron skillet. 10 inch for this recipe. Last but not least, because uh, the, uh, the main ingredient being cornmeal, you want to get yourself some good quality cornmeal. By good quality, what I mean is this is stone ground. Okay? Stone ground. Organic or not, that's not the point. Stone ground cornmeal. All right? That's a good quality product right there, and it's really going to avoid having sort of a sandy texture. It's still going to be a little bit gritty, but man, is it going to taste good. All right, so let's get to the ingredient list right now. Okay, so here's what you're going to need for this delicious, dairy-free, gluten-free, skillet cornbread recipe. Two cups of unsweetened coconut milk. Guys, you can use any dairy-free milk that you like. I much prefer the coconut milk above all else. Not the blend, just pure coconut milk. And whatever one you choose, make sure that it's unsweetened. Two tablespoons of lemon juice, preferably the real thing. Don't try and avoid that squeeze bottle stuff. Two and a half cups of good quality stone ground cornmeal. One quarter cup of sugar. You can use white refined sugar if you can tolerate it. Uh, personally, I prefer the, uh, the golden cane sugar, uh, organic if you can. Half a tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of kosher salt, and a half of a cup of, we use dairy-free margarine. You can use butter if your family can tolerate it, but in order to make this dairy-free, half a cup of dairy-free margarine, which you're gonna melt. A couple extra tablespoons of margarine too for the, for the cast iron pan, which you'll see in the, in the video later on. And lastly, two organic eggs. And so, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the video, guys, an optional ingredient is going to be the, uh, the kernels from one cob of corn. This is going to be, uh, I think, the magic uh, touch. If you really want to bring this to the next level, guys, get yourself a fresh cob of corn and uh, prepare it however you prefer and get those kernels off and ready to add to the mixture. Okay, sous chef in effect. Let's go cook, yeah? I want to be in your video. Yeah! <laughs> right. Sous chef, let's go. All right, so let's make some amazing cornbread. Dairy-free, gluten-free, and it tastes fantastic, guys. All right, so here's what you want to start with. First thing, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. While the oven is warming up, put your cast iron pan in the oven. You want this sucker piping hot, trust me. So put it in while your oven is preheating. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is make some dairy-free buttermilk. Uh, easiest thing in the world, guys. Whether you're using coconut milk, almond milk, whatever dairy-free uh, milk product that you're using, get yourself a medium-sized uh, mixing bowl. Put your two cups of milk in there, 
and then squeeze out the juice of one lemon. If you're measuring exactly, you can use two tablespoons, a little bit more, it's not the end of the world, uh, and let it sit while you're preparing the rest of your stuff, and there you have it, dairy-free buttermilk. Add in some lemon juice. All right, so there we got our fresh lemon juice into the coconut milk. If you're using almond milk or an almond milk blend, guys, it has a tendency to separate while it curdles, and that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is whisk it together to make sure it's consistent. It's about the flavor here, so it's, uh, it's perfectly normal if it separates a little bit. So with the lemon juice in, just give it a quick whisk so that it's all nice and consistent. <laughs> it's almost like, not if I'm gonna say this, but when. Next, get a big mixing bowl. All right, so get all of your dry ingredients in here, your cornmeal, baking powder, soda, salt, uh, and your sugar. Okay, then you want to whisk those together so they're nice and combined. And there we go. Dry ingredients, thoroughly whisked and combined. Check. Okay, so to make this recipe truly dairy-free, you've got to use a dairy-free butter product. Uh, we choose one that is uh, dairy-free, soy-free. It's perfect for our family and all of our various intolerances. So whatever you're using, butter or margarine, half a cup, put it in the microwave until it's nice and melted. I think it's been a while since I pointed out that true Canadians put maple syrup in their coffee. Yeah. Cheers, guys. All right, so let's have a closer look at this dairy-free buttermilk that we've made. Okay, so it's been around 10, 15 minutes since we added the lemon juice to our coconut milk. And upon closer inspection, it doesn't really look that different. Now, again, it depends on the dairy-free product that you're using. Almond milk has a tendency to separate. Coconut milk, not so much. Uh, but again, it's about the flavor, guys. So regardless of how it looks, uh, whisk it together before we start to the next step, and uh, you'll see that it's going to turn out just nice. Okay, so fresh dairy-free buttermilk is ready to go. Let's add our melted butter into there and whisk it together. Margarine, not butter. Dairy-free margarine. It's so easy to make that. A little typo. All right, so with the melted butter mixed in, now we're going to add two organic eggs. Go organic! I have been known to buy non-organic eggs sometimes. Ah, gasp, I know. The price can be very prohibitive, but at any opportunity, I'm always trying my best to get organic eggs. So whisk together your buttermilk, margarine, and egg mixture until it's thoroughly combined. Try not to splash too much like I'm doing. A little bit of a mess. Clean up aisle two. And then there were two. Bowl number one, dry ingredients. Bowl number two, all the wet ingredients. So take the wet, put it in the dry, and whisk it together until it's nice and smooth. Another thing I learned in my research is there are many purists that say, don't mix it too much. I don't really understand why. I don't seem to think it makes a lick of difference. So go ahead, judge me in the comments. <laughs> Now, as you can see, this mixture is very, very liquidy. Having done a few tests on this one, guys, I know that this is going to turn out great. So this is the right consistency for your mixture at this time. Okay, so optional ingredient. Optional slash mandatory, okay? Um, I just basically took a fresh ear of corn. I microwaved it in the husk for four minutes. Um, purists, I apologize, okay? But this is the quickest, easiest way, rather than waste a great big pot of water. Uh, so I'm going to take the kernels off this corn, and I'm going to give them a rough chop so that they're not so huge, courtesy of uh, suggestion by Chef Nona May. All right, so we're going to get that into the mixture. Okay, I'll call you when I'm ready. You got it. <laughs> My daughter, five years old. So call me on the phone when you're ready. I work in the office. You work in the office? Wow. You work in the impulsive culinary and head office? Yes. So yeah. What's, your, what's your title? What do you do? Are you the president? Uh, yes. You're the CEO? Yes. CCO? Chief yes. culinary officer? Yes, I'm everything. You're everything? <laughs> You are all chiefs. Oh, I love fresh corn off the cob. So here, I've given it a rough chop. Some of the kernels are still full size, but most of them are just a little bit chopped up and roughed up. It's going to add a great texture to this recipe. Mm. Calling Chief Culinary Officer Samantha Jane. Could you please report to the test kitchen immediately? We have a huge emergency. Hello. Chief Culinary Officer Samantha Jane here to mix up the final ingredients with her trusty assistant. What's what's this one called? She's not trusty. Oh, all right. So get your roughly chopped corn into the bowl, and all right, Chef Sam, fire away. I'm doing really well. You are doing very well. I have never seen such good mixing ever. They look like pancakes. 
right now. It looks like <laughs> pancake dough. It kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Chef Sam. Out, out. <laughs> she thought that was a radio so big dad. All right, so let's cautiously take out our piping hot cast iron skillet out of the oven. Smoking hot skillet. All right, so get a couple of generous tablespoons of margarine and uh, over and above the half cup melted, of course, and make sure to let that melt in your pan before we add the batter. All right, so now that it's melted in your skillet, add the batter. Get it in the oven and cook it at 400 for 25 minutes. 25 minute timer, go! All right, so something that I neglected to mention at the top of the video, it's the size of the cast iron pan. I may have mentioned it in passing. I can't recall, to be honest. I'll find out when I edit. Let's pretend this is a cast iron pan. If you Google it, there's some that insist that the measurement should be from the bottom uh, and others that say from the top. So let's just be clear. This recipe, you should be using a 10 inch cast iron pan. And 10 inches means from the top edge edge. Um, others that measure from the bottom, a 10 inch pan is around eight and a half to nine inches. Okay, so the most common version is the 10 inch from edge to edge. That's what you want to be using for this recipe. So I learned a lot when I was researching uh, cornbread in preparation for this recipe. It's very interesting to have discovered that in the true southern skillet cornbread, uh, sugar is a no-no and certainly no flour of any sort, just pure cornmeal. And so I tried it last night and I did make an authentic southern very unsweetened cornbread and guys I couldn't get into it I mean I can appreciate where it comes from and that's what I think is important so having sort of taken a little bit trip back in time uh, it was like a history lesson and trying it for the first time last night without that sugar it was uh, it made me appreciate um, what the original uh, creators of that southern cornbread uh, must have been looking for and it was a staple of their time um, however you got to learn the rules in order to be able to break them and that's a true belief of mine. I really think you have to know what the authentic comes from in order to sort of move on and make a hybrid of that. So this fusion is uh, sort of breaking one of the cardinal laws of southern skillet cornbread. There's sugar, a quarter cup. It's not that much, but it's just enough to make it flavorful and tasty. The other rules that I am not breaking, that I'm trying to maintain in this recipe in order to create sort of an authentic uh, version is to use 100% cornmeal, no flour. And uh, there's an absence of this jalapeno and all this stuff because it's, it's not a Mexican, Central American version. It's really the southern skillet bread. And uh, so that's the approach I've been taking for this. So we're going to find out when it comes out if I hit the mark. Starting to smell good in here. Mm, yes. Okay, great. So 25 minutes have expired. Let's do a toothpick test. As with all baked products, you want to check it first. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Looks fantastic. All right. So I have a sneaking suspicion that this is just almost ready. I'm going to give it another five minutes. Maybe I'm going to give it another two minutes. Literally two minutes, guys. In the absence of those corn kernels, okay, when you're just using the recipe without the corn kernels, 25 minutes, out, always. With the corn kernels, depending on how moist they were when you added them in, if they've dried out a little bit, it could be that you're going to be adding around two or three minutes to your cooking time. Just that difference in moisture makes the difference. I'm going to literally give this two more minutes in the oven, and then I'm going to take it out. Oh, it seems so unfair to have seen it almost ready. I want to eat it. Okay, I've waited almost two minutes. I'm going to take it out. Oh, guys, look at this beautiful cornbread. There's a beautiful browning around the edges, and uh, this is so fragrant. It really smells fantastic. One thing I love is that sort of cracking along the top because of the, uh, the corn kernels. Um, that doesn't happen when you don't have the corn in there. Beautiful texture. So this you want to let sit and cool for around 20 minutes before you cut into it. Guys, I just want to do an extreme close-up before it cools off too much. When this comes out of the oven, that's why you love cast iron. Look at that gorgeous golden brown just around the edge. And the, trust me, the entire bottom is the same thing. Not burnt, but just nicely browned. And the top has this great cracking. It's so nice. Okay? That's a great place to capture some extra margarine or butter or whatever you want to dollop on top of it. This is going to be delicious. Can't wait till it cools and we cut into it. Sambo, what do you think? Want to try some cornbread later? No, this ain't. <laughs> camera two, camera two. <laughs> 
Good camera <laughs> one. Oh, you're hilarious. <laughs> Be on the main camera. Camera one. Camera one. Say something really funny. Blabble on your scaffold. I got you. Let's watch you in the sink. Come on, we'll watch you. Forget cornbread. Corn ball. Corny kids. Ah, here she comes again. Okay, so as hard as it is for me to be patient, I've let this cornbread cool in the skillet for 20 minutes. Now, it's ready to cut up and serve. The best way to serve this, I think, is to make it into slices, leave it in the cast iron skillet, and put it on your serving table in front of your guests. Beautiful presentation. But for purposes of this video, I want to take it out of the pan and show you the bottom. So let's flip it out. Oh, look at this. You see the golden color of this cornbread. Look, it's still smoking. <laughs> it's still steaming from the underneath. It's beautiful. Guys, this is a great texture. It's cooked. It's golden. It's not overcooked. It's still nice and moist and spongy. Look at that beautiful texture. Okay, so I'm going to put it back in the cast iron pan, take out a slice and show you. Oh, there you have it, guys. A beautiful piece of homemade, gluten-free, dairy-free cornbread. Complete with the nice kernels, adds a nice texture inside, and look at how soft and moist that is. Just gorgeous, okay? That little crunch from the bottom and the edges that have been browned by the cast iron pan. Guys, it is beautiful. It's memorable. The texture is great. It's not too sweet. So we're trying to stay as close as possible to the authentic original southern skillet bread. But it's just sweet enough that you're going to want to have 15 more pieces. Delicious, guys. I really mean it. you got to try this. So there you have it, guys. That's my dairy-free, gluten-free take on an authentic southern skillet cornbread recipe. Uh, my name is Paul from ImpulsiveCulinarian.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video. More to come. One a week, more if I can swing it. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. I know, I'm busy eating cornbread. Sorry. Oh, let's go fix my